we certainly can track the neural correlates in our brains of transcendent relationship. We can certainly point on the MRI machine and say, okay, whether I live in China, the U.S., or Brazil, the same neural correlates run when I am in a deep transcendent connection to the force of life. You know, there's one force of life, and there's one human portal. That does not mean that all of spirituality can be boiled down to the brain. I am by no means a biological reductionist. That merely means body, mind, and soul in the monoist view of the human we are soul, we are mind, we are body, there is at once a neurotrace as there is a phenomenological experience. As I would say, there is ontologically in the structure of being the stuff of consciousness or spirit all at once, all at once. Now, in The Awakened Brain, in my book, I spend the first two-thirds pointing out our natural spiritual nature, the capacity through which we can perceive and receive transcendent awareness. But the final third is this dedicated to this very exciting emerging science done by generally extremely rigorous scientists on the foundational nature of consciousness running in us, through us, and among us, where suddenly we can stop borrowing the 20th century somewhat reductionist view of the brain as a maker of thoughts, right? Like a Ford Motor Factory, the brain somehow produces thoughts or toasters or something like that. Instead, to the brain being an antenna or a conduit mm. of consciousness. That opens up the possibility that we are both emanations of consciousness, like rays from the sun, we are in relationship to consciousness, receiving, perceiving, contributing back. There's a dialectic going on. Um, but that's very, very far, to your point, from radical materialism or biological reductionism. I think it's important to point out that the best clinical science can say is that spirituality is not a belief. It is an inborn human seat of perception. We are born to perceive into the spiritual reality. And that's where clinical science stops. And then we can pivot and say, how does the brain, what is our evidence that the brain is connected beyond the brain in the box, beyond the atomistic limits of the skull? And there, there's a cascade of magnificent research going on. May I share one of my favorite studies? Please, yeah. Perhaps my favorite study is really a foundational, founding study of what we now call post-material psychology post-material, meaning a consciousness-based psychology. It was done by Achterhoff. Achterhoff invited a traditional indigenous healer to be in one MRI machine. The patient was down the hall, and in some cases across the street, in a second MRI machine. As the traditional healer started to do his or her work, a consistent pattern came up on the fMRI machine, tracking blood flow. Within an instant, the same pattern came up on the MRI screen of the patient, implying one thing, consciousness, in two places. The material footprint is what shows up on the MRI. But how do we understand that? One thing, consciousness, healing consciousness, I would say spirit, in two places. Well, there's several explanations, but one of them is that there's a send and receive between the healer and the patient at a distance, that the brain is a form of an antenna or a conduit. But I think that it's very dangerous for the new consciousness-based science to make the same mistake as the materialist science of the 20th century, which is really to claim radical anthropocentrism, mm. that we are in the center sending consciousness back and forth. From whence does consciousness come? Well, no one really answers that, but it's kind of suggested that we make consciousness or we're, you know, we're the king and the queen. It seems to me that if we're really on a search, that we shouldn't feel nervous or somehow out of fashion to step out of the outdated vogue of radical anthropocentrism. I mean, let's build a science built around source that there's a source of consciousness. I say God, you use your word. 